thank you very much for everybody that is around and that came. Uh, this is our Bible study uh, on the book of Revelation. So uh, we're going to look at uh, the chapter 7. So there is a video in a Facebook group that if you want to have a look at the video, or maybe already did, then uh, that will be great. And uh, so, uh, yes, uh, I think we're all good to go. Yeah. So, Andre, in your program, uh, End Time Study, uh, we will always focus here concerning Bible prophecy as it relates to the end time and explains to us the end time. Eh? Yes. Mm. Yeah, that's so, yeah. So, this program brings us now our discussion to Revelation chapter 7. Yeah. We have come now a long way from Revelation 1. I want to remind everybody. Because, you know, if it's, it's sometimes very difficult to, to understand the Bible in context and, in context and lose, um, you know, the, the way we're going. Like, for instance, if you look only at Revelation 7 on itself, it doesn't make sense. You have to place it in its context. The context we've seen was that and is that Jesus open, is busy opening the seven seals of the sealed book that he took from the hand of him who sat on the throne. Yeah. So remember now, last week we discussed the sixth seal. Yeah. And that was Revelation chapter six. Yeah. So in the previous chapter, uh, chapter, uh, we, we could see the first seal, the second seal, the third seal, the fourth seal, the first seal, the sixth seal, all make part of Revelation chapter 6. That is right. Yeah. But remember, Andre, the book that is sealed has got seven seals. And now, what we have here in Revelation 7, Andre, is very interesting. We have added detail, information, because... If you read carefully the previous chapter, it, the, the seals open one after the other. That's the first correct. seal, second seal, third seal. But suddenly there's a stop. Yeah. Between the sixth and seventh seal, yep. there's a halt. Yep. Because there's added information that the Lord wants to give us. Yep. So he, we did not get this information after the seventh seal. We get it between the six and seven C. Yeah. We call it in theology a parenthesis, yeah. which means that in the midst of all of it, there's a stop and something is uh, come to us to understand. So there's a halt for a moment. And then the, the rest of what's happening continues. So we are now. We are between six and seven seal. That's where we are. Okay. That's and right. so, having said that, when you look at Revelation chapter seven, there's two groups of people mentioned here. It's important that we contrast the two groups of people described in the chapter. We have from verse one to verse eight, the sealed Jews, the 144,000. Yep. And then we have the second group, the saved Gentiles, verse 9 to 17. Because yep. it's very interesting for me and you, because, I mean, what the saved Gentiles is, we read in verse 9, after these things I looked and behold a great multitude which no one could number of all tribes and nations, peoples and tongues. Yeah. So, so as to the first part of the chapter, the sealed Jews. We read they are Jews because it says 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel, 12,000 of the tribe of Judah, 12,000 of Jews, 144,000 Jews. After the rapture, 12,000 of every tribe sit on earth on their forehead with the mark of the Lord, the seal of the Lord. Yeah. And the second part reveals to us the great multitude from the great tribulation, because it says 
who are they? And they said this for and they come out of the great tribulation. So yeah. this is after the rapture. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say, Andre, is when you open your Bible and you read Revelation 6 and 7, the rapture has already taken place. So the 144,000, yeah. uh, the first group, they will have part in the spiritual restoration of the people of Israel in the first three and a half years of the Great Tribulation. Yeah. So their ministry have an effect only in the first half of the tribulation because they disappear in the middle of the seven-year tribulation. They disappear off the earth. Very, very interesting. Yeah. So the, there's four yeah. angels uh, that was tasked to execute the judgments of the Lord on earth. And there's a specific number of his servants, Andre, and it says 144,000. Uh, will be sealed. What is amazing is that God in his foreknowledge, he has his four angels waiting for the day to come when they will uh, seal and release, where, after these people are sealed, release the judgments of the Lord on earth. So it does tell us something, uh, and, and that is before these judgments will be the seal sounded to 44,000 on their foreheads. Now, it is a reminder that in the book of Exodus, the houses of the Israelites, they were also marked with the blood of the Lamb to escape the judgment of God. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That is interesting. So, so we see it again here. And the reason why they're being sealed, they will be protected from physical harm. Yeah, so, 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 they will be, so they will be protected in the tribulation that nobody can hurt them. Okay, yes, yes, the interesting thing about them, Andre. Let's yeah. just talk a moment about them. They weren't saved earlier, otherwise, they would have taken be taken away with the rapture. That is correct. Yeah. Yeah. So they went into the tribulation and then something happened. Yeah. Right. So, so, and that is because they study the scriptures and they discovered that the, the rapture really took place. And the Bible is true, the New Testament. We learn from them, they are from the 12 tribes of Israel. That's correct. So, they are Jews. Yep. So, 12,000 from every tribe. Right. And the witness only start after the rapture. Yeah. Also, Andre, we notice they will be sealed on their foreheads. Yeah. So the question is, what is this seal? And so we are told, only told, it is the seal of the living God. Yeah. Only later. In Revelation 14, verse 1, we read more about the seal where it says, And I looked and behold a lamb standing on Mount Zion with him, the 144,000, having his father's name written on their foreheads. So, so the seal on their foreheads is the father's name. They belong to the father. Yeah. And what is amazing is in the book of Revelation, chapter 2 and 3 in the church, we read that Jesus said of the church, you will have my name, my father's name, and the name of the new Jerusalem on your forehead. Wow. That is, that is so interesting. That's, 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 yeah. That is very good because that gives them a chance as well. So after yes. their salvation so, time. Yeah. Yes. So isn't it amazing, Andre, that for the church, for me and you, we have, we can't see it, but on your forehead, Jesus said, you will have my name, the name of my father, and the name of the new Jerusalem, which means we belong to the lamb, we belong to the father, and we belong to the city, the holy Jerusalem. Amen, amen, amen. It's amazing. Yeah. As to these 144,000, they belong to the father, and they will stand before the lamb. So the fact that they are sealed, it's they will be protected during the first half of the Great Tribulation 
as the Lord assigned special ministries to them in this time period in the Great Tribulation. So no plagues can harm them. Well, you know, they, they will be servants of God. According to verse 3, it says, for they are the servants of God, but they're also, they are evangelists because they will take the gospel to the Jewish people and they will explain the Lord to the people and they will be spared from the coming judgment according to Revelation 7. When they entered the, yep. the seven-year tribulation, uh, I think what maybe also contributed to their salvation is that uh, they saw that the church is gone and it was true. Yes, absolutely. In, in other words, these people, the 144,000, let me tell you the following. If the rapture is going to take place in the next few years, these 144,000 are alive on this planet at this moment, but they don't know that they are the 144,000. Yeah, that, that's of course, because they don't believe yet. You understand. But they must be close to the truth. So in other words, they are searching for the Lord. They are searching for answers. Amen. Yeah. We know they will be successful in their ministry, Andre, because we read in this verse 9, of all the people coming to the Lord, of every tribe and nation around the world. So their, their ministry will be very and they will song as a new song in heaven, according to Revelation chapter 14. And so these are God's special people that will be used by the Lord to minister during the time of the great tribulation. So Andre, it also tells us that God never allows a time period in history where there's not the testimony of God. That is true, yeah. Yeah. So even after the rapture, yeah. there's still the 144,000. Yeah, yeah. Plus, plus Enoch and Elijah. <laughs> the two witnesses. The two witnesses. Yeah. You see, so in other words, the 144,000 and the two witnesses, they will work together. Exactly, exactly. So um, because the two witnesses are also Jews. Yeah. And what about, Pastor, Pastor Raymond, what about the the angels that uh, go through the heaven and 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 uh, uh, tell, tell, also tell them the the gospel the gospel. What's those? Uh, can you uh, just tell us a little yes, bit about? Yes, we will get to it. That is in Revelation chapter ten and eleven. But yep. that word gospel, Andre, in the Greek language is not evangelusa. So they have a different message because angels is not allowed to preach the gospel. Okay. Do you remember in a uh, book of Acts, chapter yeah. 10, the angel said to Cornelius, call Peter, he will tell you what to do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yes. That's Why the don't thing. the angel take a shortcut and say to him, believe in Jesus Christ? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because because angels, not. because angels are not allowed to preach the gospel. Yeah. So the angel can only bring messages of God. Only human beings can preach the gospel. So the angel that flies in the air, when we mean you will get there in a few weeks time, you will discover that this message is acknowledged that the Lord is God, the creator of heaven, the one that formed the universe, not except Jesus Christ as your savior. Yeah. Wow. That is given to the 144,000. All right. Sure. Sure. So, uh, Andre, just something else about the 144,000, which I would like to mention, is that the 144,000, they are not uh, Jehovah Witnesses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they are not a particular group of people because from a dispensational view, they are called only in the great tribulation, not now in the church age. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so, so they that, so they specially uh, mean uh, uh, they specially uh, God specially looked at them for doing this purpose through the tribulation. Exactly. Yeah. Just like Enoch and Elijah, yeah. just like Jesus chose his 12 disciples 
So this is by choice, God's sovereign choice. Yeah, so they were chosen. Yep. Yes. So this brings us now, Andre, to the second part of Revelation chapter 7. And that second part tells us the multitude from the great tribulation. Yep. And so, of course, these are the saved Gentiles after the rapture. Yep. And they are Gentiles who have been saved through faith in Christ during the first half of the seven-year tribulation. Yeah, yeah. And so what we discover when we study um, very closely, then we discover once again the number four. Nations, tribes, peoples, and languages, which means all the peoples of the earth we are talking about now. And yeah. so they are from the heathen nations, from the Gentiles, as to the 144,000 from Israel. So there's a big, big difference between the two groups. Yeah. This particular group come out of the Great Tribulation. And so Jesus Christ... Before he opened up the seventh seal, the one who had the scroll in his hand, we discover here, they cry, salvation belongs to our God and who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. So what they were saying is, Jesus saves. Jesus is the Lamb. Yeah. If they said that before the rapture, they would have gone with the rapture. Yeah, yeah. So they only come to salvation after that. So it also shows us, Andre, that God works not only in the church era, but even after the church era. You know, these people actually have a name. They are called martyrs. Yeah. Because they will die for their faith. Remember, yeah. Yeah. all these people died. It said they were before the Lamb and crying out with a loud voice. And one of the elders say, who are they? Where do they come from? Verse 14. And he said, sir, you know, they are the ones that come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made it white in the blood of the Lamb. That so is what correct. is amazing here is these people got saved in the seven-year tribulation. So Andre. For people to say that the Holy Spirit will not be on earth in the days of the tribulation, it's not correct. Yeah. Because how can you get saved without the Holy Spirit? You can't. And this is why he, the Holy Spirit will still be here. Yes. Yeah, 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 through the tribulation. That is 100% correct. Yeah. Andre, you know, when you open your Bible in the book of, G of Genesis, verse 1, verse 2, it says, that in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And it says, and the spirit of the Lord hovered over the earth. The spirit of God has been on this earth since day one. Yeah, yeah. And he will be here until the last day. Yeah. Although the work of the spirit was different through the dispensations and the ages, there was never, ever a time on earth that there was no spirit of God. Yeah, I, I believe that as well. <clears throat> Through study, I've realized that, uh, the, but the Holy Spirit worked with people different in different ages of the time. Yes, yes. So the, there was a Holy Spirit in the Old Testament times. Yeah. Because it says of Joseph, who is there a man like who has the Spirit of God in him? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, Joseph and, to, uh, Joseph uh, and the and, the uh, and Joshua, Daniel, and well, Daniel. I, I think what I've seen uh, in a little book that I read from uh, Doctor Stan is that he said that there was only two two persons that had uh, the Holy Spirit in them, and that was Joshua and Joseph. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, I do not, uh, I do, yeah. Um, Andre, I never read that he ever said that. Uh, yeah. I doubt uh, maybe, um, you know, after he died, uh, people say things that he said. But I want to say is that remember when Jesus was discussing the new birth. 
yeah. being born again with Nicodemus. Yeah. That discussion was in the Old Testament period, although it's written in the New Testament, because yeah. the New Testament only started when Jesus died and was resurrected from the cross. That is correct, yes. Because the Testament so when Jesus started, told Nicodemus about yeah. being born again, that's Old Testament stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. And so, and even Moses in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 10, he told the people, you need to be circumcised in your heart. And that speaks of being born again. Yeah. So, and I clearly want to say for the prophets of old to prophesy, they had the spirit of God inside of them. The Bible says that Daniel had the spirit of God in him. Joseph had the spirit of God in him. So uh, I would not go with that, that they did not have the spirit in them. But they were not baptized with the Holy Spirit power like we see in New Testament times. Yeah. So I've also yeah. I've also read, and it's quite interesting. Uh, we just lately did a bit of a study, is uh, through the whole Old Testament to see where how the Holy Spirit's work on uh, on lo a lot of the people. They were uh, the Spirit came on top of them, not basically not in them, according to Scripture. I mean, if yeah. I don't know if it's correct. Yes. Yeah, what you, what you are saying is uh, absolutely correct, Andre. Because what you are saying, I'm not, Andre, there's a difference between the person of the Holy Spirit yeah. and the power and the gifts. Yeah, yeah. That's and correct. the uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit. So yeah. in Old Testament times, the power of God would come over Samson and he could do certain things for that yes. moment. Yeah. Then the power would go that's, away. Yep, that's correct. That does not happen in New Testament times with the battle of the Holy Spirit. And yep. that is what you are referring to, exactly correct what you're saying. Yes. But exactly. we are talking about being born again, having the Spirit of God inside of you. That yes. is Old and New Testament stuff, just for interesting sake. Yeah. So now, as to the question of this great multitude, of course, they have the spirit in them because otherwise, how would they be born again? Yeah, it was definitely so, the Holy Spirit. Uh, you can't be saved without the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So as as to the this people, they paid with their lives. Andre, if somebody would listen to us today, and they don't accept Jesus Christ, and the rapture takes place. Yeah, I want them to understand something. Go and read Revelation chapter 20, yeah. and I'll give you the verse, verse 4. Yeah. I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Yeah. I then saw the souls of those who have been beheaded for their witness of Jesus and for the word of God, yeah. who had not worshipped the beast, the Antichrist, yeah, or his image, yeah. and had not received the, his mark on their foreheads, on their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Wow. They are called the martyrs. Yeah. I want to say, rather die for your faith in the great tribulation and go to heaven for eternity then than to, to accept the mark of the beast and go to hell forever. You, you can't compare. You can't compare. What is amazing about this group of people, we know where they come from. Yeah. They come out of the Great Tribulation because he asked, where do these people come from? So under what we do know, me and you, without a shadow of doubt, the rapture does not end salvation for the, for the world. Yeah. But salvation will mean death, assured death for believers in the days of the Great Tribulation. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The death of a martyr. Yeah, that's right. And they can't be called martyrs if they have not been killed. As uh, you know, you the, understand uh, the you, Bible you says the guillotine. So yeah, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be really hard, and uh, and it but it's gonna happen. I mean, it's God knows that it's gonna happen, and this is why He says it in His Word. So what we do understand from Revelation seven, yes. There will be 144,000 Jews saved. Yes, 
there will be a multitude of all the tribes and nations and tongues and peoples of the earth. Many, many people will be saved during that time of the tribulation, but at the price. Yeah. They will pay with their lives. They will have died for their faith. Yeah, yeah. I think our half an hour is up. There is one question. I don't know if you maybe will have time to uh, cover it, but let's try. Will the people okay. that receives the white robe, okay. so, so those martyrs, will they? Yes, be the I know we're coming to a close. The, they, they are the people that receive the white robes. Yeah, but will they be the bride of Christ? No, they can't be the bride because they're not part of the church. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I. That's so what I thought. because yes. they are the late harvest. Yeah. yeah. So Andre, let me say this: that is why they are called martyrs. Yeah, I am, I understand. Yeah. And yeah. So so what we found, what we found uh, before we close our discussion, what we do understand from Revelation 7, Andre, indisputably, the Holy Spirit is still active on earth during the Great Tribulation to bring salvation, new birth, to the 144,000 Jews and to the Gentile people. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So, yes, there's going to be a big moment. And also, that's it. And, you know, the one thing I want to encourage people, the martyrs were all accepted by God. They stood before the Lamb of the, th the throne of God. Amen. They were joyful. They sing praises. And they were rewarded, the 16 and 17. Wow. Yeah, that's fantastic. It's an amazing story. Yeah. So when we come next week, then we will go to the seventh seal. Only after the seventh seal, we can read what is inside the book. We are still not there. We want to read what's inside that little book. And That's we are correct. only now between six and seven seal. Yeah, no, that is fine. Thank you again. Yeah. Thank you very, very much. So next time, what we could do, Andre, when we start your conversation, if you can prepare some questions that people are giving, uh, are asking you, then we can start sometimes our program first answering some questions before we go and see what is up. <music>